it gives me great pleasure that a global discussion on the role of bamboo and rattan in the green economy is being held in Ethiopia. My government strongly believes that bamboo and rattan greatly contribute to environment-friendly accelerated development, and we are much honored to host this summit in Addis Ababa. In 2011, the Ethiopian government introduced a climate resilient green economy strategy with the objective of creating a zero net carbon emission by the year 2025. The strategy aims to achieve an inclusive and rapid economic growth in an environmental friendly manner. We are looking forward to the adoption of a new set of sustainable development goals and I'm pleased to note that IMBAR has used these new goals for 2030 as guiding principles for this 2015-2030 strategy. Hence, implementing the political statements and translating goals into concrete actions should be our urgent priority. Non-timber forest products such as bamboo and rattan play a considerable role in the alleviation of poverty by diversifying and enhancing employment opportunities. They can help sustainable land management, climate change, adaptation, and mitigation. Bamboo and rattan support rich biodiversity, such as the endemic Bali monkey that depends on healthy bamboo for its survival, like the panda in China. And the use of bamboo and rattan products help to protect forests, providing substitutes and alternative goods and services. In short, both plants could contribute for sustainable development. Therefore, they should be accorded an international priority in contrast to their previous categorization as minor forest products. I hope this summit on the role of bamboo and rattan in the green economy will reaffirm the commitment of the international network for bamboo and rattan. Imbar member says to promote the role of bamboo and rattan in poverty elevation and environmental sustainability. Imbar deserves our sincere appreciation for organizing the summit in Addis Ababa in collaboration with the Ministry of Agriculture of the Federal Democratic Republic of Ethiopia to highlight the importance of both plants in the green economy. The summit is a testimony to the commitment of Ethiopia to play its role in the governance of EMBA and in the development of bamboo in Africa. This summit centers the discussion especially on the role of bamboo in ensuring global green economy while supporting economic well-being of countries in their transformational agenda. To address environmental problems that we face, the concept of the green economy has been advocated since 2011. The green economic policy for bamboo and the rattan industry development was declared during ministerial workshop of Imbar member countries in 2012 in Beijing, China, which is known as Beijing Declaration on Bamboo and the Rattan. Today's summit also marks renewing of our commitment to earlier declaration and the foster green economy by revitalizing the role of bamboo and the rattan resources subject to country-specific situation. Welcome to the Bamboo and Rattan in the Green Economy Summit that Addis Abeba and the government of Ethiopia are hosting this week. It is with great pleasure that I join you and offer a few remarks as you set out to hopefully change what is often a misperception and misconception about the vital role that bamboo and rattan already play in our lives, in our economies today, and also the potential that it holds in addressing so many of the challenges that we often associate 
is transitioning towards a greener, more sustainable economy in the 21st century. Even the international assessments in terms of climate change assessments, mitigation and therefore also sequestration potential of bamboo is often underestimated. When you take some of the latest figures that we are presented that, for instance, bamboo and rattan can absorb up to four times and sequester four times more carbon than traditional hardwood species, then you begin to sense that from a climate change mitigation perspective, here is an enormous opportunity to act. In our work in the United Nations Environment Programme, we are constantly looking for opportunities to demonstrate that much of what nature provides us is not understood well enough, both in terms of how we measure and value it in our economic indices, our systems of national accounting, and perhaps even in the traditional forestry and land use assessments that are undertaken. Our objective is to try and point to solutions that nature provides us in how to make better use of land, of biota and also of biodiversity, while at the same time being able to respond to the developmental priorities and needs of 7 billion people. My message today is to commit us in the United Nations Environment Programme to work with the International Network on Bamboo and Rattan and also its team and secretariat in Beijing and the many others who are already part of this network globally to first of all try and better understand what is holding back the further expansion and scaling up of the use, the planting of bamboo and rattan and secondly how can we raise public awareness, expand markets and therefore also consumer demand for products that ultimately will provide jobs, will also allow often remote and sometimes marginal communities in areas of countries that economically still struggle to try and take advantage of global and national markets to use bamboo and rattan to accelerate development at the same time to show the scalability of our capacity to use bamboo and rattan to combat climate change, sequester carbon and ultimately also enhance the resilience of our economies. I thank all of you for having made the journey to Addis Ababa and hope that out of the summit that you are holding this week we will receive both recommendations and directions of how we also in the United Nations Environment Programme and the broader UN family can be part of taking advantage of the enormous potential of bamboo and rattan Thank you very much and I wish you a very successful summit. Because we have a lot of forests in Africa, in most of Africa, and because the forest product is high value, we must impress upon our people that bamboo is an alternative, not only in the green economy, but that it can actually fetch a lot of income. For example, charcoal production using bamboo we piloted that in Ghana, and I think this is an area that must be plucked and pushed very, very hard because fuel wood use and the fuel wood have effects negatively on the environment in terms of forest degradation and forest loss is very, very important in the whole green economy. And so they need to really rally around. And in Ghana, for example, we have um, a policy in our wildlife and forest uh, policy 2012 to uh, promote the use of um, viable alternatives. You've got an image problem with bamboo <laughs> because it's seen, I think, by many farmers as a not very valuable resource, actually a bit of a pest because it, gr because it grows fast. And I've learned a lot. I didn't know that until I was here that bamboo can be four times more efficient than, than trees in terms of uh, carbon absorption. Issues like that aren't being put out enough, in my view. And it has a sort of scientific problem as well, because scientists, I think, quite rightly say it's, it's grass. Mm. And therefore, it's not a tree. If I go out there and look at the products, um, for me, it's wood. And I'm still very impressed how you manage to turn a round product into a flat product. I still haven't quite work that one out. But I, I think you do have, have to get out this positive news uh, about the, the value added, the um, environmental, positive environmental impact of, of bamboo. I had a trip in 2009 in China with my team and we visit what was being done in bamboo and at the end of my visit I asked a simple question to my guest, to my colleague from China. How can I do to use the process of transformation, what I have seen in China, in bamboo technology, to wood in Central Africa? And they laugh and they say, no, what we are using in bamboo, we took it from wood. So for us, we believe in uh, Komifa country, the issue will be the transfer of technology. Uh, we believe in terms of 
uh, where, where to have the good, um, the, the sound uh, production when we go for afforestation and also the transformation of uh, bamboo. And so this is where we are going to put a lot of pleasure in terms of our strategy for the next uh, year to come. In the northern boreal temperate, you have basically middle quality wood that is very good suited for construction with middle prices. Where in the tropics, you have extraordinary high valuable wood that grows very slow, that is not big av available today in, 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 in volume, if we would want to use it sustainable, and firewood. And you have a gap. And of course, there is some construction with tropical hardwood, but it's really a pity to use it for that mm. so solid wood. So bamboo could be that intermediate product that is lacking without importing it from, from other regions that would be uh, quite an absurd endeavor. In this middle uh, quality segment that is construction, and uh, not only the low value scaffolding and so on, but, but the uh, principal construction, at least if you're not thinking about big buildings that would mm. technically be very difficult. Yeah. There is wood entering very softly after many decades of fighting, but there are lots of dispersed building around. And uh, for sure, the, uh, it, it's very important once uh, technically, Aisha has shown uh, the capacity of, of, of establishing houses of one, two, the typical family houses with full in bamboo, uh, that it's technologically very easy to transport to Latin America or to Africa, uh, to the Pacific or to the Caribbean. It's an issue to get a breakthrough, both by technology transfer and as well socially. So what we eventually might need, and you see all of uh, very provisionally constructed houses around, is a kind of IKEA of bamboo building mm -hmm. that in certain way provides uh, the material that even a family can, with very little support, construct its own home that is much more uh, reliable uh, than, than other uh, issues. And it is very light, so it's not a construction that would be impossible. The DINBAR and the SNV, the Netherlands Development Organization, are starting to work together, and we have uh, uh, some exciting ideas. And one of them is particularly relevant to all of you here um, because it is about how we can use bamboo for energy in Africa and look at opportunities, not just charcoal, but look at various options, gasifying, biofuels, um, whatever is possible, looking at how we can introduce better stoves and basically work together on developing a program that will help many of the countries in Africa. We believe that the partnership would work very well. IMBAR is an intergovernment organization. SNV is an organization that has much more its feet on the ground. So we said we need to work together. Let's agree on this and sign an MOU. I'd like to share our excitement about this new partnership on bamboo and rattan by two leading international organ organizations, both with impressive outreach. Uh, we are planning to establish the largest pulp and pepper mill industry in Ethiopia. We sell uh, today to 48 countries in the world. Uh, and we, our focus is uh, export only. We sell to the US as well as we sell to Europe and Japan. And it is a fair trade platform, meaning that it's a fair price. You tell us what price you want to sell for and we will help you sell this at this price. So if you say the basket is, say, you know, $10 and you sell 50 baskets, that's $500. We, you get paid $500. Even today in Europe, and as I, I, I told you, we have been doing this for quite a while, if I ask 10 people on the street about this product, probably uh, uh, eight or nine have no idea. So the, the whole awareness is, is not only in Africa a, a problem or a challenge, but even in Europe. Before, we are only a supplier for this online shop. Uh, so through this online shop in USA, we are the biggest supplier of bamboo products in North America. So through this online shop, we sell more products, not only bamboo floor, also bamboo furniture to international market. In Ghana, land is owned by other chiefs, stools, and individuals. Government has little ownership of land. So if you want to invest in plantation, 
uh, who is going to give you the land. There are competing uses of land for agricultural purposes, and we are also doing plantation for other tree species. So if you want to really intensify commercialization. Why do we need the landscape restoration? We are living a world with rapid changes, mounting pressures such as expansion of agriculture and urbanization, climate change, timber and energy demands, uh, and so on, are aggravating the competition of land use. Global deforestation is continuing. Annual late loss, roughly 5 million hectares per year in the world. And when it comes to the green economy transition, all the technologies, almost all the technologies we need to have are already here. They are on the table. What we are lacking is the social innovation, which includes various levels of social innovation, starting from the institutional innovation we need to have within the public sector. But it goes down to the local community's ability to be involved in an innovative exercise. So with very good business plan, when we benefit the rural communities, I think they can understand even better than me about protecting the environment. Management-wise, we can control it because bamboo has to be cut every, every year. So we have to regulate it. If you have a good management system for our bamboo forest, and if we always cut the matured ones, then there will not be really uh, invasiveness problem. So it's about management, about selection of species, uh, and so on. So it is not a threat, I can say. Invasiveness is not really a threat. Any species introduced in a new area will have some level of uh, interaction with the ecological system, and it could lead to a negative effect. So of course, if you manage it well, it can be managed. But the first front frontier is to make sure that you don't make the wrong decision. Let us do things in a, in a knowledge based okay we have to use the existing knowledge as well we don't have to bring you know uh, reinvent the wheel i personally i love bamboo i i am very much impressed and the, the the world bank task team is very much impressed especially with this bicycle okay so even in ethiopia we have to help the the, the rural communities Thank you very much for your contributions into the debate, for having been with us for this day, this full day. I would like to thank the INBA members for having been here two days already because we had a busy day yesterday as well to discuss the kind of things that members discuss when they have their General Assembly. And I can say it was very positive. We've agreed on a whole range of things. On behalf of INBA, I would like to thank the Minister of Agriculture but also, again, to recognize the support from the German cooperation through GIZ, the two programs, the support from the Embassy of Norway, the support from the International Fund for Agricultural Development, DFAT, and support from the International Canadian Development Agency through the Embassy here in Addis Ababa. So with those last words, ladies and gentlemen, I think it's time to close. Thank you very much indeed.